Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's hardware channel. And today I want to talk to you about an ancient processor that I still have. And it is the Intel Core 2 Quad Q9650. Uh, it's a socket 775 CPU and it has only four cores uh, in this time, uh, modern time. Four cores aren't that exciting anymore, but back then it was. Uh, dual cores was the norm. So four cores, four dedicated cores was really cool. It has no hyper threading. Uh, it was implemented with the more expensive uh, CPUs, which I'll get back to you after this. But um, So there's no hyper threading on it. It, is, it was introduced in the third quarter of 2008, so that means it's 10 years old now. It was built with the 45 nanometers uh, lithography. That's uh, quite big for this time and age also, because today we're looking at processors uh, which are built with 7 nanometers, 7 to 10 nanometers lithography. It depends on which manufacturer you have to believe. It has a TDP of 95 watts. It was the fastest processor of the Socket 775 processor series. So it's the fastest York field processor that was out there. And as I said before, I just wanted to know how fast is it and can you game on it? So while preparing for this video, I suddenly realized that the former motherboard, Socket 775 motherboard that I used to own, the Asus P5QE that it used to own. Um, well, it didn't work anymore. It uh, uh, was broken. So I threw that one away. And so I had to go online and get myself a new motherboard. And I got this excellent MSI P45 Platinum motherboard, uh, which is coupled with the ICH10R Southbridge. It has dual channel and only PCI Express Generation 2. Um, I Paired it with uh, four sticks of uh, two gigabytes of Guile Black Dragon Evo DDR2 800 uh, megahertz. So that totals at eight gigabyte. Now Guile for the Dutch and German people out there isn't the Guile that, we're, that we think it is. It stands for Golden Emperor International Limited. The Cinebench scores. As you can see, they didn't include the newly released Cinebench R20 scores because I don't think that they reflect this processor that good. That one is released for uh, processors that ha have a lot of cores, and this one only has four nice cores, of course. It's a horse. Um, it sticks nicely against the Intel Pentium G4560, which is the nice budget processor. It's just a teeny bit faster than the Intel i3-6006U processor, which is in my budget laptop. And if you compare to the old, even older AMD Phenom processors, well, let's not compare those. The 3D Firestrike physics scores. These are only the physics scores, so not the graphics scores. And I was a bit surprised that the uh, Phenom 2 X4 was a bit faster than the Q9650. In my belief, the, this processor, the Phenom one, was a bit slower, as you saw in the Cinebench test, than this one. So was a bit surprised. Um, also happy to see that my 8600K is uh, more than twice as fast as this one, but still it's not enough to power a lot of games. So let's go on over and see how this works in real life games. Not really a benchmark, but still I wanted to show you uh, Fallout 76 in the top left corner, you can see that, well, at this moment, 60 FPS, but walking and looking around in the real world, you only get, well, 40 to 50 FPS. Um, there's not really a benchmark for this game, so I just wanted to see what it does and even if it could run. And as you can see, it did. It does run. But mm, the FPS isn't that big. The main problem with this processor is, is that it doesn't do that many draw calls, as it's called. The draw calls is the, the triangles that makes up um, uh, 3D objects in this world. And it doesn't have the power to make, to create enough of them for, uh, to make the 3D objects. So it slows down so it has more time to create the, the 3D objects in the world. 
37, 41 FPS, not enough to game. 60 is, but you're rather zoomed in at this moment. This is, by the way, these are low settings, uh, the lowest as they go. And well, the processor was struggling to get at least something of a decent FPS, but 40 is not enough. So Fallout 76, no, don't do it, even on low settings. Now, Rise of the Tomb Raider. These are quite nice settings with 50 and even a 60 frames per second. But as you can see, it will drop down relatively fast now because there are too many triangles to calculate and it doesn't. And why does Laura Croft look like she's shit her pants? Why does she always walk in such a weird way? Um, I think this is one of the best games, the, the complete Tomb Raider series. I really, really love them. Really, really? I've been getting comments of saying too many times, really, really. So uh, the series I do love. So if you get, can get the chance to get them in a budget box, do get them. And the second benchmark in the Tomb Raider game. The benchmarks, if the FPS in the top left corner, well, it's about gameable. 50 to 60 FPS, that's gameable. Let's take a quick look at Lara Croft when she has shit her pants. It's weird. Look at those knees. Something's not correct there. Do you walk around the forest like that? No, I don't. But still, there wasn't bit, uh, much of a difference between the 1080p and the 720p. It's about the same score, so I was a bit amazed, surprised by that score. So let's go over to the third test in this Tomb Raider game. And the third and final test. At the beginning of this scene, there's always a big rise in the FPS above 60. But as soon as you see the town, the FPS will drop uh, because of the draw calls. Um, 60 FPS, well, that's more than gameable in my opinion. But as soon as you hit 50 and below 50, there's not much of gaming happiness anymore. Because it gets too sluggish and too... No, nah, it doesn't work anymore. So this is considered not gameable for me. The average FPS for the complete game is 43 FPS. It's at the very bottom of gaming experience happiness for me. So no, it's a no for me. Let's head over to the beautiful Deus Ex Mankind Divided. As you can see in the top left corner, uh, the CPU is being eaten up by the game. All four cores are working 100% for this game. But still that doesn't result in a great uh, FPS score it will go up to about 60 FPS but that's one that is really nice to see but still 40 or anything below 50 FPS is not enough to play the game nice and smoothly even 50 it doesn't really have my preference but still um, by the way this all these tests have been done by and uh, with an MSI 980 Ti so to reduce any bottlenecking from that part but still 90, 59, 56, 52, 50, no, no, that's not smooth enough to play the game nicely. So Deus Ex 12, uh, sorry, Deus Ex uh, Mankind Divided, not really, not playable. And to my surprise, The Division, it's not The Division 2, it's The Division Regular, has a very nice FPS. It's playable, and these are even the ultra settings. It does have some problems with some scenes that aren't too. Um, you can see that the screen of the the scene is being built up, but still, uh, well, as you can see, 60 FPS. Well, that's more than playable, so it can run this game. So I was wondering, does it play? Uh, the Division 2. I did have some problems at first to start this game up. It, this, it didn't have the correct scenes. The lighting didn't work at first. So I uh, reinstalled it and this is the result. So this is at low, uh, the lowest settings, but still it looks kind of beautiful. 
but as you can see in the right corner in the middle graph uh, the CPU is doing everything and the GPU is doing absolutely nothing so all the problems you have as you saw with the boxes there next to the plane um, all the, 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 the triangles that have been built up all the, the complete scene that has been built has to be built up is it has to be done by the CPU and it's struggling to do that in a fast manner but still uh, it's still really playable and that brings me to the overall scores uh, what you see here are some games uh, with their settings uh, everything is in 1080 uh, high definition uh, in blue you can see the FPS in DirectX 11 and of course I always test with DirectX 12 uh, except for Thief, uh, because that one was, uh, well, it doesn't have uh, DirectX 12 implemented. Fermentite at low settings, 66, 64 frames. Uh, the Division ult uh, at Ultra settings, very playable at a decent 63 FPS in the benchmark. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, that's not the last Tomb Raider, but the, uh, the former, is still a very decent uh, 62 FPS at very high. Um, what I was looking for is getting the most uh, of at least 60 FPS and the settings uh, more higher. So when I did the settings of the Rise of the Tomb Raider to Ultra or Highest, uh, it fell well below the 60 FPS. The Division, uh, that's supposed to be the Division 2 uh, at low settings and still 59 uh, FPS, but as you saw, it was it looked decent. Deus Ex Mankind Divided at low settings, uh, not really playable, and the same goes for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is the last in the Tomb Raider series, and not playable at the low settings. Thief, which is a game which is rather old and still didn't get enough FPS, is 36.5 on normal if you if, if you played it at lower it turned to be 34 fps still not playable i was a bit amazed by that score because it's an old game it's about five years old so why didn't it get a higher score and that leads me to my final conclusion are you able to play with the intel core 2 quad q9650 as you saw with the overall scores, there are some games that are still very playable, like Fermentide 2, The Division 1, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, even some The Division 2, but as soon as you get to some more complex games like Deus Ex Mankind Divided or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, even at lowest settings, you won't get a decent FPS. So my final verdict is, it's still an excellent CPU to, uh, to have, but rather if you still have it um, if you want to buy it secondhand please don't donate uh, rather spend your money on a decent AMD Ryzen CPU that's it for me for this time and I hope to see you soon with another review over here on Anton's hardware channel